In the 1840s, San Francisco was a growing community, fueled in part by Oriental immigrants who heavily depended on rice in their diet. China was supplying the majority of rice for the area, but in 1852, a severe famine hit China, so the Chinese government quit exporting rice, leaving the city with a huge shortage. The price of rice soared to a hefty 12 and a half cents per pound. Local businessman and an immigrant from South Africa, Joshua A. Norton saw a win-win situation. He invested everything he had in a shipment of Peruvian rice. Before his shipment arrived, other shipments arrived, flooding the market and driving the price down to three cents per pound. Norton lost everything. He sued the contractor in the United States federal court seeking to have the contract voided, but after years of litigation, he was penniless. In 1858, he supposedly left San Francisco, but returned in 1859 with a proclamation. The proclamation opened, I, Joshua Norton I, do declare and proclaim myself emperor of these United States. It went on to call for the abolishment of the United States government. He delivers it to local newspapers, where editors are amused but do not see a story in it. When he hears that Congress is still meeting, he orders General Winfield Scott to proceed with a suitable force and clear the halls of Congress. Another decree removes Governor Wise of Virginia for allowing the hanging of abolitionist John Brown and appoints John Breckinridge of Kentucky to replace him. Editors now see a story in him and began publishing his decrees. They also embellish on them, make up their own decrees in his name, and at one point add protector of Mexico to his title. As a result of this, the Emperor Joshua Norton I attracted national attention and becomes a national icon. As his fame grew, he attracted an entourage that followed him wherever he went. He walked the streets of San Francisco in a military uniform designed by military personnel at a nearby fort. More decrees are published. Whether they are his or made up by editors is uncertain. One thing that is certain is that as his fame grew, so did his value as a marketing tool for the city. Each time his name was published, every reader associated it with San Francisco. Just how important was the Emperor Joshua Norton I to San Francisco? Some local restaurants had signs posted in the windows saying a seat was reserved for the emperor. A play was written in his honor called Emperor for a Day and premiered at the opening of Tucker's Hall. He had his own money with his own likeness printed that was accepted at businesses he frequently visited. And when arrested for refusing treatment of a mental condition, the chief of police stepped in, had him released, and issued a public apology to him. From this point on, when a police officer of San Francisco crossed paths with the emperor, they saluted him. Was he mentally ill or just an attention getter? One decree to fire the Oakland City Council for refusing to fund airship experiments being conducted by a friend of his would indicate he was unbalanced. However, he was also a man of vision, ordering the construction of a tunnel or a bridge to connect San Francisco with Oakland. In the 1930s, the Oakland-San Francisco Bay Area Bridge was constructed. The Trans Bay Tunnel opened in 1969 with a plaque at the entrance honoring him. A movement to have the Bay Area Bridge renamed to honor the emperor was halted when the Oakland City Council voted against it. Joshua Norton I, Emperor of the United States, died on January 7, 1880 on the streets of San Francisco. Originally, he was to be cremated because he had no money. So a group of local businessmen got together and funded his funeral. Over 10,000 people viewed the self-proclaimed emperor's remains for the last time. He is now buried outside of San Francisco at Woodlawn Memorial Park in Colma, California. He came to San Francisco to help himself, but only succeeded in financial suicide. But like a phoenix rising from the ashes, he was transformed into a self-proclaimed emperor that helped bring the city to national prominence in the 19th century. I'm Stephen Picks.